One of the saddest things in the world is wasted talent. Therefore, today's feature film is going to be a, a somber one. It's going to be very melancholy today because we're talking about nine players that are awesome real life players, but they ain't going to get it done this year in fantasy, man. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make, and I made a full video, right? It was like eight things that I see people do wrong in fantasy football. We'll link that down below. One of them is just completely betting on talent. And that's a very big mistake in redraft leagues because talent doesn't always equal opportunity. Talent doesn't always equal uh, efficiency when you have to rely on other players to also be efficient, okay? And that's what the crux of this list is going to be here today. So we're going to rip through nine players that are awesome at football, awesome real-life football players, but will be the opposite of awesome for fantasy football this year. Y'all know what we got to do next. Tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. I was in Austin for a bachelor party this previous weekend. Got back late last night, so if my brain is not working correctly today. You know why? And I just kept fucking doing this all weekend, just flexing the traps. And by the end of the weekend, it was like nine dudes and everyone was just walking around the house like this. We had like three people pull their trap muscles, but we're going to fight through today. Forget where I was, but hit the fucking intro. <laughs> All right, just a quick reminder, our season-long draft guide goes live on August 1st. It'll have all of our rankings for the 2022 fantasy football season and a whole gang of other shit. You can go cop it now on bdge.co, but the cheapest and easiest way to do so is to go to prizepicks.com and deposit $10 or more if you're a first-time depositor, $10 or more, and use the promo code BDGE when you do so. You will get access to prize picks. You will get $20 on prize picks. They're going to double whatever you put down and you'll get access to our draft guide. All right, prizepicks.com. First two players up on this list are the Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver tandem of A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. You know, I've talked about A.J. Brown uh, a lot this summer. He's just a guy I'm fading where he's going off the board currently. We just look at what the Eagles are on offense. Obviously, the quarterback situation is what scares me the most, and I like Jalen Hurts. Uh, he'll never be a prolific passer in the NFL, okay? They rank 29th in passes per game last year and Jalen Hurts wasn't very accurate on those passes Devontae Smith last year finished as like the wide receiver 36 he was a rookie he was a great fucking rookie right very efficient he was exactly what you wanted to see based on the fact that they draft him very early in the NFL draft and he'll be a really good player for a team that you know hopes to take a, another step they already made the playoffs and this is a, a key pillar of their offense going forward doesn't mean he has to be good for fantasy football when you look at Jalen Hurts' splits over the last two years of him you know, being the actual quarterback there, I basically filtered it to games in which he has, oh, like 14, 15 pass attempts or more. So the games that he was actually the quarterback and the problem on this little picture is this 1.16 spot right here, passing touchdowns per game. He doesn't get into the paint box by way of arm. He is a runner. He is not a prolific passer. Now you're divvying up targets to A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard, who is also wildly, if, I don't think we're talking about Dallas Goddard enough as being like a problem for these other guys. Dallas Goddard is the guy that we've been waiting years, years for Zach Ertz to leave for him to be the guy. And now he's the guy. And now we don't give a fuck. We should. We should start giving a fuck about Dallas Goddard because he's really efficient. A.J. Brown's really efficient. Devonta Smith is really efficient. But guess what? There's not enough volume to have to bank on efficiency from all of these fucking guys. Brown and Devontae Smith dominate downfield, okay? His deep ball adjusting completion percentage last year, Jalen Hurts was the 29th out of 35. His yards per attempt on those deep passes was 27. So I have concerns whether or not Jalen Hurts is a good passer, whether or not they're going to give him enough volume to, and if they do, him spreading it around correctly to make sure everybody eats. So everybody needs to take a step back in this offense, all right? Everybody average draft position-wise. Prize Picks has A.J. Brown, I believe, at... 1025 in terms of receiving yards as their their season long prop 1025 a lot of wide receivers go over a thousand yards you should not be using your back end second early third round pick on a guy who's going to have a thousand receiving yards probably at his ceiling all right so i'm a little bit concerned about both of those guys both awesome players both incredibly risky this year in terms of what they could actually bring to your team and the same could be said with both of the wide receivers in Miami and Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. I've also talked ad nauseum about these two about why I'm very very nervous with Tua at quarterback with this scheme that's not necessarily throwing the ball downfield and Tyree Kill is no longer with Patrick Mahomes. Tyree Kill his ceiling came as a result of the deep balls. He is not just a deep ball player. He's going to get plenty of screen passes, plenty of around the line of scrimmage stuff. He'll still probably catch 85 to 90 passes. I think he'll probably end up in that like 1050 to 1100 yard range where we were always used to seeing him with the ceiling that came 
with 1350, 1450, 1600 yards because of those added monster plays down the field that Patrick Mahomes was the reason those things happened. I don't know what two is going to be. I don't know what this offensive line is going to be. I don't know what this offense is going to be. I think both Terry Kill and Jalen Waddle will be fine for PPR. I don't think they're guys that, just like Demonte Smith and A.J. Brown, you want to be investing early, early round capital on because they don't give you a lot of bang for your buck in return. You might feel good about it. They might be nice, like, safe picks that have good PPR floors, but they're dudes who are just way better. They're way more talented than they will be good in fantasy football this year, as is the case with DK Metcalf on this list. All right, wide receiver, Seattle Seahawks. Here's what I promise you. I'm going to make a presidential speech right now. Here's what I promise you. I promise you, my good, great people out there from all over the world, men, women, everything in between and outside of that, American, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, fucking uh, Nigerian, and everybody in between and outside of that. Here's what my promise is to you. I promise you that extrapolating a three to four game sample size from Geno Smith as the quarterback is not good process for fantasy football. Don't do it. Don't bet on DK Metcalf in the early rounds because he's super talented and because he had three fucking good games with Geno Smith. Those things don't work out in the long run, okay? Do not do that. Seattle is arguably the worst offense in the NFL, was the slowest offense in the NFL last year. Their plays are going to be very, very down here. They have an awful offensive line. Don't do it, all right? Do not do it. DK Metcalf, we need something to happen to this offense. We need Jimmy G to come over or something in order for me to feel even close to okay drafting a dude like DK Metcalf this year. J.K. Dobbins, the running back for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, until we need to hear good news from this guy's injury return. Like every other running back, we're hearing amazing news. They're all back from their ACLs. They're all 100%. They've all never been this healthy or felt this good or been this explosive or, you know, they've never done it like they're doing it right now, except for J.K. Dobbins, man. And it's hard to be anywhere near in on him. I'm, I'm an injury pessimist, all right? So unless there's just absolutely raving reviews and videos where doctors are confirming that what he's doing makes him 100%, uh, then I have a problem drafting a guy going into the year that's still hurt. Injury prone? Probably not a thing. Can we predict injuries? Absolutely not. But if a dude steps on the NFL field at less than 100%, I can 100% tell you that the likelihood of him getting hurt while playing around other guys who are 100% is much fucking higher. That's my problem with these dudes returning from these long injuries. Most of them just want to get back on the field and rush it, and that's where it becomes problem fucking matic And we haven't heard a lot of good stuff about Dobbins thus far. I will say, though, he's starting to fall a little bit in drafts, man. I have grabbed him in a few best ball drafts at like the 6'10", the 6'11", in one quarterback leagues. There I'm fine, right? Because a lot of the, I'm not like really giving you the value or the ADPs on some of these dudes. I'm just talking about dudes that will not live up to their actual talent level. We all know what J.K. Dobbins is, right? His first year in the league, he was one of, if not like the most efficient running back on a per touch basis. He's explosive. He's a good touchdown scorer. Like he gets it all. He's one of the better running backs in the NFL when all is said and done and all are health. However, we don't know if he is. I'm willing to take that risk at the back of the sixth round. But the problems don't just stop at the ACL tear. Uh, the problems continue in just the makeup of this offense. Like there won't be a lot of dump offs to go around here in the running back group. Lamar Jackson just doesn't do that. He, you know, he takes off more often than he dumps off. Kind of pause. He takes a lot of dumps too. But on a fucking stay focused, Nick. Stay focused, boys. They had Mike Davis and they draft Tyler Beatty, who both are very capable pass catching backs. I don't think Tyler Beatty really like makes a big impact at all rookie year, but I think Mike Davis is going to be way more annoying than most people give it credit for. If there's only 50 fucking running back receptions to go around and Mike Davis takes like 22 of them, which is not a very high number whatsoever, that doesn't leave a lot for Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins. Like there's a lot of missing parts here that I just don't feel comfortable with Dobbins. And I think it's just going to be a committee in Baltimore until they feel like Dobbins is at 100%. And uh, right now it feels the opposite of that. A guy that is healthy that I am worried about is Damian Harris running back in New England. Okay. And if you've made it with us this far, then I would really love for you to hit the thumbs up button. It's a button that looks like this. I'd also love for you to put the fucking D in the subscribe button down there. So you become subscribed because we're doing fantasy football videos every single day of the darn week. Damian fucking Harris. All right. Pretty much 
every like must draft video, every target video, every list I made last year included this guy on it. He was one of the better ROI plays that we had as a brand last year. Absolutely love Damian Harris. Still love him as a player. Still think he's super fucking talented. We're swinging the other way this year on him though. Number 10 overall in rushing yards. So he's a top 10 rusher just from baseline level statistics. 15 total touchdowns, 15 total touchdowns. I mean, in a bad year, in a, in a down statistical year, those 15 touchdowns might have led the NFL. I didn't go back and look at the numbers, but I bet if I did, he would have led the NFL in touchdowns outside of quarterbacks, obviously, in maybe like two or three of the last 20 years. Like 15 total touchdowns, no fucking smoke, no joke. Problem is, things are going to be different this time around because Ramondre is going to play a bigger role, okay? I've already heard beat reporters from New England, like respectable ass ones, talk about how they think Ramondre Stevenson might take over the backfield the second half of the year, all right? He has real upside as a three-down player. Damian Harris does not. Ramondre Stevenson almost feels a little bit like Kareem Hunt at this point. Feels like someone who has more three-down upside, but hasn't necessarily taken over the role. And Ramondre Stevenson is a guy who will be drafting heavily in 2022. They also bring back James White. Uh, they draft Pierre Strong, who is basically probably taking over the James White role eventually. They draft Kevin Harris, another big bruiser. So they're definitely preparing for Damian Harris to kind of, you know, depart after this year, which means that towards the end of the year, they might start looking or game planning to make whatever the following year is going to be the current year. All right. And that's where I think Ramondre Stevenson really comes in and breaks out. And before adding all of these heads and all of these thoughts that I had about it, like you look back at last year and Harris already ranked 42nd among running backs in snap share, 33rd in opportunity share. This feels a lot like when Mark Ingram went for 15 touchdowns a bunch of years back in Baltimore, ended up as like the RB8 or some shit. You know, listen, like we found the needle in the haystack last year. Let's not try to roll the dice and get cute here again. Harris, awesome, uh, awesome real life player. If I was a Patriots fan, I would love this dude. He won't be that in fantasy this year. Uh, neither will Kenneth Walker, the running back, Seattle Seahawks, rookie this year, obviously one of the more talented, if not the most talented pure rusher in this year's draft class. It's very low hanging fruit at this uh, at this point in the offseason, um, but now all the reports are coming out. But just remember where you fucking heard that. Literally the day after the NFL draft, I said this was one of the worst, possibly the worst landing spot for a rookie running back for Kenneth Walker for season long, for redraft purposes, all right? And now over the last few days, the reports have just been fucking blown out of the water. We have ESPN's Brady Henderson writes for Rashad Penny is in the driver's seat to be Seattle's primary back. The Seattle Times' Bob Condota expects Rashad Penny to be the Seahawks' primary back and projects him to handle 20 carries per game. And we have another one. Uh, Seattle Times projects the Seahawks' third down roll to Travis Homer or DJ Dallas over Kenneth Walker. So, um, listen, I don't trust like beat reporters when they talk about statistics and be like, Penny's going to get 20 carries a game. They have no idea what they're talking about. But they watch the practices. They get to see what's happening there, and that's how that's how they translate. They're not good at translating what they're seeing into numbers and statistics. That's what we're here to do, right? But they are good at translating the way they feel about it. They see Rashad Penny getting all the first down reps. Therefore, he goes, oh, 20 carries a game. But what they're really saying is Rashad Penny is getting all the first team reps as it relates to carries. So what they're telling you is that one, where there's smoke, there's fire. With Kenneth Walker, we have the fire department on their way. Smoke everywhere. People abandoning the building. All right? It's a problem over here for Seattle. Kenneth Walker's a guy who's a rookie who's going to take a, a minute to get assimilated. It's, again, terrible offensive line really slow offense. There's just not a lot of upside here outside of you loving the talent. So we all love the talent. We like Kenneth Walker, okay? But the situation is horrible and it won't get better until next year. So lay off Kenneth Walker. Go buy a fucking jersey if you want to support him or something. But next year we draft Kenneth Walker in fantasy. Not this year. And just staying on the scene, man, I'm just ripping through Seattle Seahawks. But no fan, man. No fan's been fun to watch the last couple of years, see him progress. He's obviously one of the more athletic tight ends that we've really ever seen in the NFL. He ain't going to get it done this year with whoever they have at quarterback in Seattle. So Noah Fant has dropped ridiculously from like, you know, he was one of the the highest ranked dynasty tight ends uh, just a year or so ago. And now he's getting picked. I want to say like the tight end 18 or 19. And I don't blame anybody in the public doing so. So Noah Fant's another guy where, you know, if we get Jimmy G back in the mix, maybe we have a little bit like George Kittle light going on with Noah Fant. But until that happens, Noah Fant is going to be a much better practice player. He's going to be fun to watch if you're in Seattle and they do open practices. You can go watch him run around in shorts and a t-shirt. But for now, we're not drafting Noah Fant in anything besides best ball. Okay. And that's going to wrap up today's video. I believe we hit nine players. Maybe we did eight. Maybe we did 12. Again, the brain is at a lower capacity right now because of what this weekend entailed. But thank you for hanging out with me today. Again, make sure you go check out prizepicks.com.
Use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more for the first time, and you're going to get our season-long guide. You'll get our rookie guide, too, but obviously we made that a couple months ago for your rookie drafts. Uh, and then you'll get 100% deposit match on their site to go play with and nail the unders of all these shitty players on the shitty, somber list. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, and I shall see y'all tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.